Okay, so I have the radio tipped up now. It's operating. It's picking up some computer type stuff. Where's the noise? Something a little funny about what's happened to the tuning here too. It's uh, it's become very tight. It's getting tighter and tighter. In fact, no idea why that would be. The radio's working pretty good actually. No noise. You're um of a radio. Okay, so let's, uh, yes, ABC, ABC, ABC. So I look here, there's the ABC tube, it says right there. And go back, we'll take a look at the grid, signal grid. Interestingly enough, it's not the first grid in this tube. They're actually using the, uh, what we would call the screen grid. I don't know what they're up to. They did the same thing with one of these other tubes. They don't actually use the signal grid. The grid closest to the cathode. They're using the other grid. They're kind of grounding out the close grid to the cathode. Right? So I don't know. Some way of using these tubes. They're both 6SK7. So whoever the radio designers were up to, they, uh, they figured something out about that particular tube. So those are the grids that are probably on the AVC bus. Let's see. One of these... There. Yep, and there's the other one on the same line. So if we can find R9, we can pick up the ABC voltage. I think R9. Now, luckily, this manual has this fantastic diagram, which actually shows the layout of the components under the radio. So all I got to do is find R9 on here. R9. There's R9 right there. So R9 is tucked up near this switch cable socket. R9. R9 comes off of this IF and heads to the signal grid, just like I was saying. Oh, I can just spot the signal grid on this tube. So tube, transformer tube. Two transformer two, but it's sticking right up there, easy to see. And the grid. Is probably. That one. Right there. <laughs> Let's take a look. Let's see what we get. I wouldn't expect too much right now, and there's no signal coming in. Now, you can't see the meter, but I'll tell you what it says. So I think that's grounded. That, that signal grid. Ooh, big negative voltage there. It's big in relation to the scale I was on. Hey, wait a minute. This thing on DC negative. How come it showed it going backwards? Something's not adding up. So I'm getting a DC voltage of... Oh, a big honking DC voltage there. Slightly negative one there. What is R9 anyway? R9 is R9. 2.2 mega. So that would be red, red, green, I think. And 
see a red, red, green right here. Light negative. Kind of what we're looking for. Let's tune in something. Have a bigger negative voltage. So that can be our test point or bigger one on the other side here. I'd like to use the biggest voltage. So there we're upscale a wee bit. Ooh, better not use that. Same reading either side of that resistor. So, well, let's just clip on there. We'll call that our ABC voltage. Here. Okay, one lead to the chassis. voltage lead onto that point. Okay. Doesn't seem to have disturbed the radio at all. Let's just double check. Oh yes. I have ABC action now on that. Excellent. Excellent. You need to see it. You need to see that. Okay, let's see if I can do some clever camera stuff here. I need to catch a couple things with this other camera here. No, that's not going to work. Okay, let me reset. Okay, I think I got the cameras on an angle here. This camera you're looking for now, you can see the meter back here. And as I tune, you can watch the ABC voltage. Come and go. Not very, very big action on that, is it? That's on the, uh, oh, that's on the 50 volt scale. Wow. So we put that down on the 15. So this is now 15. Okay, so the noise, the noise signal is holding it up here. Curious carrier with no nothing on it. We're all set. We are all set. Okay, so back to the signal generator. On the other camera, don't fall off your chair here. It's kind of twisted around sideways. Tune the capacitor right to the limit. There's our signal generator. Okay, so I fashioned a little piece of wire right here. And that's the pointer pointing at that scale. The scale, the scale back here. And when I turn the capacitor all the way closed, which it is now, that pointer should be pointing at 180, which is where it is. That's 180. 170, 160, and so forth. As you see, I have to rely on that because there's no pointer or scale, dial scale, to look at when the radio's out of the chassis, which is quite common. So they put the scale on the back of that wheel so we can do this. So I think I'm all set final. 
I'm all set finally. But it's not quite lunchtime yet, too. So at least we can get through the IF, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to dial in, oh, yeah, I'm going to dial in the IF frequency, which you cannot. And that's one thing I missed in my camera arrangement. But anyway, I'll dial it in. 454. On this radio, it's coming around 463. That's where it's tuned right now. So I'm going to leave it there. And we will attempt to adjust the IF and see if we can bring this this meter up, this meter up, this meter here. Sorry, I, sometimes I think you're looking at, out of one camera when you're actually looking at the other because I can see both on my computer screen and I get confused. Because I see what I want to see, I don't realize, hey, that's not the camera that's live. So occasionally I make a camera boo-boo. You know, if this wasn't absolutely live reality TV, I would edit all that stuff out. And you'd never know that I make mistakes. And what fun would that be? Okay, so I'm using a metal screwdriver. It seems to be fine, though. I like the metal screwdriver because of the stiffness of the shaft. If you use a plastic one, you need something quite stiff to do this work. Okay, so I'm watching the meter. And maxing that. You see, that it did have a little bit of an effect, didn't it? have a, a relatively stiff plastic one and that control was turning easily. So I'm going to try it again here. Yeah, it's not turning well. On, like this isn't fitting in properly. Oh, what's going on there? have to tune it offset with the screwdriver and then take the screwdriver out and see if I got it. Something funny about this. It's not showing a normal peak. Well, let's peek each one, and we'll, we'll see where we get to. Okay. And the other one is down here. Oh. I guess sometimes when I'm shooting these videos, I also go, oh, but I never explain what I'm owing about. What's going on here? I can't get the screwdriver in here. Try a sharper screwdriver. What's going on there? Oh, there's wax in the uh, wax has dripped down. Let me show you this. I can just grab my other camera here. Focus, is it? Hang on, hang on. Everybody, hold on. Okay, that'll do. So, down here, there's the uh, where I'm going with the screwdriver. I've already knocked out a fair bit of the wax here. My screwdriver's going in just fine. Okay, I'm watching the meter. You can't see it right now. Let me fix that. I'm right near a power, the power uh, wire where it comes in the radio too. I gotta be very careful with my little plastic camera. It's not plastic. It's aluminum. And uh, 
Okay, here we go. Oh, this is stuck. Ooh, I'm putting a lot of pressure on it. It's not moving. Holy smokes, it's really stuck. Okay, let me get a good grip here. Wow. Try a different screwdriver. Wow. Okay, so that one doesn't want to go anywhere. I don't want to force it too hard. Hmm. That's just a little on the disappointing side. Let's try it from the top. Because I can grab these with my fingers. Oh, these are really loose on the top here, so... Now, watching the meter behind my hand here. <laughs> There we go. Oh, this is really loose. Not a very sharp peak, but I'd say there. Okay, going to the next one. how any of these are working. Seem to have increased the bandwidth there by the tonal quality of the hiss. You can get these things too, too. They end up with too narrow of a uh, bandwidth. actually not tuning too bad. I'll tune my generator. And then go back to alignment here. I try the lower one again. Now oh, really the screwdriver just comes right out of the out of the uh, slot. Okay, so let's assume that's going to be as good as it's, <laughs> as it's going to get. Uh, 16 ways to not align your radio. Way number 15. Okay. And you go on doing this just by ramming the IF into the antenna, too, at the back. And I'm really doing this in a cheap way. So the next thing we should try is uh, actually uh, receiving uh, AM signal. So the way to do that is get my spare loop antenna here. Disconnect the signal generator and connect it to the loop, the loop antenna. Connect both the conductor and the. Wait a minute. That's not what I want to do. This is what I want to do. So the signal generator will be uh, energizing this loop. the IF coming through. So now we want to tune the radio to 600 kilocycles. And over here now. 600 kilocycles. 147 degrees. So I gotta go to 147 degrees. And I have to put my other camera back here. me here while I refocus again. I keep this camera on manual focus because the autofocus not so good on this camera. It just seems to hunt endlessly. So there we go. 
So we're at 170 on the dial right now. Let's check it. Pointer calibration it should be 180, and it is. And now we go to 147. 147. 147. Yeah. One forty five, forty six. Okay, there's one forty seven. Yeah, that's supposed to be six hundred. So let's see if it is. So now let's this in there. There, now you can see the frequency up here. Should be six hundred. Look at that. Pretty much dead on. You check the other end at uh, dial to 19.5. That's 20. That's going to be 19.5 there. And now 1500 kilocycles. Okay, so let's 1500 kilocycles. Here we come. Anybody hear it? And the answer is no. I did find this radio to be insensitive at the high end of the band, and that's where we are now. Mmm. Well, I'm going to boost the uh, coupling between the Listen, these two antennas. You can't get more coupled than that. Something funny about one of these clip leads, I think. Well, that's supposed to be 1500. I'm still at 19.5. So we should be adjusting C27. C27. C27 is right here. C27. A oscillator. C27 
C27. C27, a little awkward to get at. <laughs> Everything's great except I can't get at the, the thing I need to get at here. Let's see. I'm fishing around. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I think I got it now. Oh, I gotta do too many things at once here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we'll find that. Wow, that was really loud there for a moment. My uh, screwdriver is magnetic and it's jumping around here from magnetism. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try this one. Something's magnetic down there. So I'm just trying to engage the screwdriver in the screw. Without actually seeing what I'm doing. Let's Okay, so I'm looking at the screw. The screw slot is vertical. And that's good for me to understand. And you turn the screwdriver the right way to begin with and try to stick it right in the slot. There it is. Okay, I'm in the slot. Now, what have I done? I'm down to 15, 20. There we are. Okay, I think we're good on that. Now we should go back and see what happened at the 600 end. Okay, we're Feeding out 600. And we will tune down to this one, 147. Right? Last one is to do the antenna C4. And um, back up to 1500 megahertz, 1500 kilohertz rather. Okay. Signal generator back to 1500. Okay, and now we tune C4. And where is C4? C4, 
looking at the diagram here, trying to spot C4. C4. Where are they hidden it? There it is, C4. Right in a corner, right up under here. Right up there you are. C4. I'm just hoping the screwdriver will drop in. There it is. I've got it. And I'm tuning this for maximum. So I'm watching the meter now. Which, uh, up the noise more than the signal but yeah that's good got a little bit of a boost there uh, not much though so there we go AM side done here let's put the antenna back on the outdoor antenna notice any difference here. Ooh, that's a great song to test a uh, radio with. This song, it's got a nice tone to it. But I'll get a copyright hit if I hang around. with the external antenna we take it off and we pretty much have nothing. Let's take it off again. This loop, loop antenna was supposed to do the trick, but apparently not. Okay, well that's, that's it for this, for now, um, it's a long journey to get here. Um, what's left is doing the short wave bands, and uh, I'm looking at the clock on the computer here, I think it's lunchtime for me, so I think I'll leave it at this, I'll try and post up these videos. And, uh, I think we're doing okay, I just don't like that static problem that went away. Um, gee, if I had some freezy spray, and I just don't have any, I'd try freezy spray on the capacitors and other parts and see if I can affect that static, but really only when the static is a problem. Once the static goes away, it's really hard to hunt it back down, so it's gone away for now. Maybe it's never coming back. Thanks for watching so far, and uh, see you for the short wave part of this.